Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 30 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn Fusion 360 or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up, straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 29. So I guess the first question we have to ask is how many of you guys were successful? If you were successful in completing the homework, comment down below, I am legend. And if you were not successful, leave the comment, I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. And then of course the third category is I never even entered the arena, which is the worst one. You guys that just watch and don't do the homework and think, I'll just watch him because he'll do it next week. It always looks easy when I do it, when you watch me do it, but you got to do it without seeing me do it first. And then you know if you really understand it or not. Okay, so what was your homework assignment? Your homework was, assignment was to model my coffee cup, to model my coffee cup. And remember, this is a very unique coffee cup in that it folds in upon itself. So when you look down here at the bottom, that is not solid glass. That is an air gap, okay? And so you have a thin piece of glass that goes up. It goes over the top, down, uh, you know, over the top, then it starts down, and then it comes back here. So it's sort of like a piece of glass that's folded in on itself. And your assignment was to model this coffee cup using Fusion 360. Also need to remind you when you do the homework assignments, post them to YouTube, then in your video description, link back to this lesson so that people know where you came from. And then in my comments down below, put a link over to your homework solution. And I look at every single homework solution that you guys post. But enough of this introductory banter, let's jump in and let's see if we can get busy. Now you guys would just have to kind of eyeball it, but since I have this, I'm going to show you how I do things. I start by just kind of roughly measuring things. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my view here and I'll show you just the simple measurements that I would do in order to model this. And so I've got my pen handy here and then I'm just going to be making, uh, making a making a few notes as I go. So first of all, I'm going to get the top radius, the top radius. And what that is, I come from the edge of the cup and let's work in millimeters. And it looks like a diameter of 80 millimeters, which would be a radius of 40 millimeters. Now what I want is I want to look at the bottom radius. Okay. And the bottom radius, this doesn't have to be exact, right? This is not rocket science, but we want to just get it roughly. It looks like that it is about 57 millimeters. Let's say 58 would be uh, 29. 29 would make 58. So 29 millimeters radius for the bottom radius. I always write these down. I think I'll remember them and then I forget them. And so I write them down. Now let's look at how tall it is. It's coming in at a nice round 150 millimeters tall that we don't divide by two because height is just height. Okay. And now the question is, where is this tangent point? Do you see it's getting wider, 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 narrower, narrower, narrower? Where is the point that it goes from getting narrower 
uh, getting wider to the point that it's getting narrower. And that looks like it is right at 100. Okay, so the uh, right at about 100 millimeters is where that happens. Now, I'm not going to try to measure the amount of bulge. That one we're just going to kind of eyeball in. But I've got some pretty good numbers here to get us going. So let's come in and let's start modeling this thing. I will need you to fire up your Fusion 360. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I am going to create a sketch. I want to work in this X, Z plane because I want to rotate. I want to revolve around the Z axis. And so that would be the red blue plane. I'm very deliberate in getting that done. And now the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to draw the base radius and right that bottom radius was 29 millimeters. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not on construction. I'm going to come here and I'm going to come out 29 millimeters and then boom, I've got my base. I'm going to draw some construction lines just to help me in uh, drawing this thing. <clears throat> so I'll get a line. I will make it a construction line. We're going to come up and then the height, what did we say was one? 50 millimeters like that boom that just sort of gives me a point to design to and then also the top radius was 40 millimeters so I will kind of draw that point just to be helpful 40 millimeters like that enter enter so this is kind of where I am designing to and then also remember that I had that point that was uh, where the tangent was and that was at 100 millimeters so I'm going to start here and hopefully this will give me a point that I can see when I do this and so I'll say 100 millimeters was about where the thing started necking in yeah I can see that well there and now it's time to start splining Okay, so we get the spline tool and what am I going to do? I'm going to start here at this point and then I'm going to come to this point. You see that's where I want to be, but I'm going to come out a little bit. I'm going to bulge out a little bit. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. That doesn't bulge out very much, does it? So what if we came out like this far and we'll adjust it in a minute, but let's come out this far and then let's come here. Okay, like that. That actually looks pretty darn good to me. Remember, you don't hit escape, you hit the check mark because we have everything that we need now. Now I can try you select. I, I might want to pull this out just a little bit. Yeah, I think that is a little bit better just like that. And the darn thing was a construction line, but we can fix that by choosing select, choose it, and then turn off the construction line over there. All right. Now, guys, do your fine tuning and tweaking here, because as you go and start doing your offsets and trimming, <clears throat> you can actually break things. So try to get it looking like you want it at this point. Okay. Try to get it looking like you want it at this point before you do the offset. So now what I need to do is I need to offset this whole thing to account for the thickness of the glass. And I think the thickness of the glass is about, oh, two millimeters is what it looks like to me. So I'm gonna modify by doing an offset. And that darn thing was selected again. Let me cancel. Turn off the, uh, turn off the line type of construction. So now I want to <clears throat> modify with an offset. What do I want to offset? I want to offset this and I want to offset it by two. And that really looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. All right. So you see I'm doing the outside now. I still have to come back and I still have to do the inside. But before I do the inside, I'm going to come down here and go ahead and close this off by just getting a line not construction type, clicking from here to here. And now I've closed that off. And I am not going to try to close off this top part until I get the whole thing drawn. All right. Now, do you see where the coffee actually is? That is the inside. And so now I want to kind of draw that inside. And if I look at it, it is coming down almost constantly inward it doesn't bulge out and so seeing that what i will do is <coughs> excuse me 
I will get the spline tool. I'm going to start on the outside just like I started on the outside before. And then I am going to be gradually, gradually coming in. Let's just see if I kind of put it about here and then start coming in to create the bottom like that. And then check mark it. Okay. So that then, this needs to come in more. So I've got to move these around a little bit. So I'll get select like that. That looks pretty good. All right. But you see what I really need is I really need this not to come down to a point. I need this to come more to a flat bottom. So you see, I'm kind of trying to play with these to try to get that flat bottom. Guys, the mistake that you make with the spline tool is coming in and trying to add too many points. But I'm going to add one because this is kind of necking down here a little bit too much. And so I'm going to right mouse click and I am going to say create a selection point. And I'm going to put one right here. Did that do one? It did not. So let me come in here again and say... I am not seeing, I would have thought that create a selection point would do it. Oh, insert spline fit, <clears throat> fit point. Okay. And now I'm going to add one right about here. Okay. Like that. And now I'm going to go back to select and now this point I'm going to bring in a little bit and then this point I'm going to adjust like that. And that really looks pretty darn good to me because like I say, that inside, it doesn't track the outside. It doesn't go out and come back in. It just kind of comes straight down and it does neck in as I look at it, it necks in a little bit. And so that really looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I am going to offset it. And so I'm going to offset that, but this is trying to go out. I want it to come in. And so I'm going to come in by minus two. The minus will make it come in and that looks pretty darn good like that. <clears throat> okay, now we got to kind of fix up this top part. And don't worry that this is like this and don't worry about all of this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to round it. So I'm going to get a construction line and just connect these two points. Why? Because I want to get the center point of that to draw a circle around. And so now I'll get my circle. I will turn off construction and I will wait till the triangle shows up, which means I'm on the center of that line. And then I will come out and I will snap to the edge. And that looks good. Now let me trim this up a little bit. I want to trim that off. And then you see, I also have that little thing that I want to tr trim off, right? I just want, ooh, not that. Okay. What, what I'm trying to do is I am trying to just create one face. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then also you can see that this this segment of the line needs to be trimmed like that. And then I think that that other line is a dimension line. And so what I always like to do is I like to get my dimensions and move them out of the way and that way they don't uh, confuse me. And now let's zoom in here. Okay, do you see I have the dotted line, the construction line doesn't count, but I have one nice smooth face there. Then what I have here is I got to clean this up. So you see that this needs to really be here. This point really needs to be here. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to see if it will allow me to make it coincident. And so I want this point to be coincident with 
that point. Boom. Okay, so you see it just kind of moved it down a little bit. All right. And then let me select off of this. So you see this is one nice open face. And then this is one nice open face, but I gotta, I gotta, this one I gotta close off somehow. All right. Cause you see, it's not, it'll allow me to select that as a face, but not this as a face. Why can I not, why can I not connect, uh, uh, make, select this as a face because it's open down here. So I have to close this down here. So then I'm just gonna get a line and I'm gonna go from here and I'm going to come down and now I have a very nice profile. I have a very nice profile of this, uh, of this cup. I think the one thing that I still want to take out, I want to take this line out. So then it's just all completely one profile. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to trim that. And now you see what I have is the whole thing is just one face. Okay, guys, are you ready to try to use our friend? Who is our friend? We'll finish sketch. And then who is our friend? Mr. Revolve. So I'm going to come in here. It already selected the face because there's only one face. Now it wants to know what axis. I will choose the blue or the Z axis. And look at that. Shazam. Let's go 180 like that. Okay, because I... Or, Let's go 90 because I kind of want to see what it looks like on the inside. And that really, really looks good. That really, really looks good. Let's go on to 180. Let's go to 180. And what I really want to see is I'm looking to see if that bottom is pretty much flat. And really to me, I'm going to turn the sketch off now. Turn that sketch off. Oh, it's still showing me where it's revolved, so I'll just say okay. Yeah, that really looks like a nice flat bottom there. Okay. And it's kind of like a rounded bottom. A rounded bottom. Uh, I mean, it's flat, but rounded on the edges. And that is really looking good. And so that looks so good, I think I will come in and I will need to turn this off so you can see what I'm doing. I come down to my timeline and I look at this revolve icon and I'm gonna edit the feature. And now we're gonna go on around 360, 360 degrees to make the whole cup. And then look at that, look at that. So let's look at the right side. It leaves that seam, that seam is not a problem, but that really, really looks good. What's the one thing I don't like? I don't like how sharp that bottom corner is. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna <clears throat> turn the sketch on. I am going to edit the sketch. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chamfer. I'm going to chamfer or fill it I think is the right thing. I'm going to fill it this to this, and then it did not follow. Sometimes it follows on the offset and sometimes it doesn't. I'll put one here and here as well, and then I will say finish sketch. And now that really looks amazing. It looks amazing, and we have created a coffee mug we have created an insulated coffee mug now of course we can't print in glass and of course we wouldn't want to drink hot coffee out of pla but we have created the model and you see if we look at that let me see if i can make that a little bit smaller i'm just trying to get a side by side okay do you see how close that is if I were to change something, what I would change is I think I flared out the side a little bit too much. And probably all the shenanigans I did in there, I probably cannot edit the sketch at this point without something getting messed up, but I will try it. Let's just say that we brought this in. Let's see if we can. Yeah, I think you see what broke is when I cut that, it lost the offset. And so now it's just moving over. It is moving over that other one. And so at that point, it's just I wouldn't try to 
I wouldn't try to fix it. But what I could do is I could be a little more careful to not have quite as much bow out there on that. But this is really an absolutely beautiful insulated coffee mug. And so uh, I think what we've learned here is what we have learned here is <clears throat> we have learned some really valuable lessons on how to use the revolve tool. We've done the revolve tool with some engineering shapes like things like cylinders and, and things that are very precisely engineering related. And then we've done some more artistic uh, uh, revolu uh, uh, revolves using uh, things that you more draw like the spline tool. And so we've shown you both of those. And so guys, man, I hope that you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making the lessons. And you can see what we're doing is I'm teaching you new design skills. When I teach you new design skills, I have to then go in and teach you how to improve your printing skills. So I give you three or four lessons on design, three or four lessons on printing, design, printing, design, printing. Because as we design more complicated things, it requires better design. It requires better uh, 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 printing skills. And I think maybe I can show you here with a little luck. This was the cup from a couple of days ago, a couple of lessons ago. And let's see if I can show you. This is the uh, little seedling cup, the little seedling cup that, uh, that we designed. Remember, we created a parameterized model for flower pots and little seedling cups. And this was a little seedling cup that I made. It's almost through printing. And wow, it really looks very, very nice. And so this was one of the early examples of using Revolve to create a 3D object. And I am getting the thing printed right now. Okay, guys, really hope you're enjoying taking these lessons as much as I am making the lessons. Hope you guys will continue to post your homework work solutions to YouTube, then leak over to them in the comments down below. Make sure if you make sure to remember to leave a comment whether you did this or not. Make sure to give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to this channel when you do ring that bell so that you get notifications of future lessons. And as always, share these videos with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.